Yes, would you ask Mr. O'Connor to come back, please? Right, Mr. O'Connor, ready to go on? Yep. Good, thank you. Yes, Mr. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. M Mr. O'Connor, uh, I was going to go on to a different topic, but can I just revisit something from your evidence this morning about Carl Stokes? Can I ask you please to be shown page 111 and line 14 of your evidence this morning? Line 14 on that page, do you see there, I asked you, line 12, fire safety as a whole in relation to the building or in relation to the project or both. And you say in relation to the project, really. And then you say he would quite often just turn up on site and, would, and we would walk the construction site first and then we would go up to various floors and he would quite often pick up, you know, just little items that he wasn't, I won't say not happy with, but he would report back to the TMO. Did you go with him on these visits? Not always. At first I did because I believed it was good to get a relationship. But after that, it would have been Jason or whoever was looking after the areas he was going to. First of all, was that Jason North? Yes. Um, I'd like to show you a document, which is CST702. Where you'll see Carl Stokes's FRA, or rather the part of it that is the Record of Significant Findings and Action Plan, from October 2014. It's a nine-page document, uh, and it's got manuscript uh, in it, or over it. Uh, can I ask you to look at page nine, please, and look at the bottom entry, um, where you can see identified risk or hazard. Uh, the external face of this building is to be overclad. The piece of cladding fixed to the external wall at the moment is on timber battens. And then... Somebody has written on it, OK, FR, no timber. Do you see that? Yes. Uh, do you recall having any discussion yourself on site, or even off site, but with Mr. Stokes in or before October 2014 about the overcladding? No, but I know what he's refer referring to when he says timber battens. What's he referring to, please? This was a mock-up that was done on the side of the building prior to anything happening, so it was done on timber. Do you know the date when you uh, know that he saw that? I don't, but it would have been the same day as the Councillor Fielding Mellon was there and the, and the planning was there to look at the colours and the, and the fixing types. So that would have been sometime in the summer of 2014, I think? Yes, it would have been. Yes, I see. I, I see. Can you explain OK, FR? I don't know. That's not my writing. No, I know. I just oh. wonder whether it triggers a recollection of the subject matter of a conversation between you and uh, Mr Stokes. No. Right. Do you remember ever having a conversation with Mr Stokes about the overcladding being FR, fire-resistant, fire-retardant, fire-rated? No. Look at the right-hand column, actions to be taken. I would recommend that the contractor provides, and then you can see four questions. The scope of the works covering how this cladding, how will the cladding be fixed to the building, what fixings will be used, the fire rating of the cladding and the fixings, the building control officer's acceptance of this fixing system and the cladding used. Now, that, those questions are the same questions, even including the typo that Miss Williams put to you in the email of April 2015, and then again in June 2015, we saw this morning. Do you want to see that again? No. I, I, you remember that? I recall it, yeah. You, recall, you, can't recall dealing, you can't recall dealing with it. Do you remember s s seeing uh, this report uh, or knowing where she got the questions from more generally? No, but reading this now, I can see that she's just copy and pasted it. Yes. Can I ask you to look at another document then, please? CST 401284.
This um, is an email, and we need, to, I think, to look at the bottom of page one. It's an email you won't have seen before, but it's between Carl Stokes and the TMO of the 24th of April 2017. So it's long after you left the project, mm -hmm. and indeed after the project was uh, completed. And it's from Carl Stokes to Janice Ray, and it's in the context of the forwarding of a letter from the LFB, external fire spread. And it says, Grenfell was clad, but the cladding complied with the requirements of the building regulations. Lots of questions asked of Rydens and answers received back from them. Uh, do you remember uh, being asked lots of questions about the compliance of the cladding with the requirements of the building regulations? No. Do you recall ever giving, or do you recall knowing whether anybody else was asked lots of questions and giving answers? I don't, I don't recall that there was lots of questions right. asked. Did you receive any questions from Mr. Stokes? About this? About anything? Um, not that stick out in my mind, no. Right. And that would include about the cladding. You don't remember any, any questions from Mr. Stokes about the cladding? No. Not that I recall. Do you know from your knowledge and recollection whether Mr. Stokes dealt with anybody else within Wrighton? about the overcladding? Um, he would have no doubt spoken to Simon Lawrence. He would have no doubt spoken to probably D Daniel Osgood. But do you, I mean, you say no doubt. I mean, are you speculating or do you remember? Uh, that's, that's just purely speculation. I, I, would, I, okay. I would say probably yes. Right. To your knowledge, and rather than, than, than speculation, did anybody from Rydens give any assurances to Carl Stokes about the fire safety of the cladding? Not that I recall. No. Can I then turn to the topic of SDP plastering and how they came to be selected? Um, you, I think, accept that the subcontractor for the interior window reveals package was SD plastering or SDP. Yep. And they were selected in around May 15, 2015. Yes? OK, yeah, sorry. Yes. Um, do you remember that the selection of SDP as the subcontractor for that work package occurred during your involvement as project manager? Yes, they probably did. They were doing other works on the building as well. Yes, but it occurred during your tenure, your, your role as, yes. as project manager. Yes. Uh, did you check to find out whether SDP were on the approved list we talked about earlier? Uh, no, for the same reasons as we used SDP on most of our projects. So I would assume someone had done that prior to me and prior to them be being awarded the, the project. Do you know whether they were on the approved list? Uh, I can't categorically say yes, but I would imagine so. Right. Who was responsible for making the decision to retain SDP plastering as subcontractor for this particular work package? Was it you? No. Who was it? It would have been one of the surveyors. Uh, name, please. Um, Adam Marriott, Zach Maynard. Right. O okay. All right. Um, were you aware that SD Plastering had initially said that they weren't interested in doing the window trimming work? Um, that does ring. Uh, that does ring a bell. Yes. Yes. Can I look at a document with you then, Mr. O'Connor, please? R Y D three zeros four two five nine four. This is an email from. Uh, Adam Marriott of Ryden to SDP, copy to you of the 29th of May 2015. Morning, Mark. Uh, do you see that? I do. Uh, and it's, there are two emails on that page, in fact. Um, the bottom one is about the acceptance of the element of the works. And the top one, morning, Mark, please accept this email as confirmation to proceed with the following additional works required at the above project. Window surrounds package to existing residential flats. Pipework boxing package adjacent to HIU hallway to existing residential flats, blinds and curtains removal and reinstating <coughs> package to existing residential flats, and then all for the sum of £152,677 ATP, subject to 2.5% MCD. An official variation summary will follow. Uh, w this was significantly lower than the sum included in Ryden's tender. 
of £474,000 for windows, sills and boards, wasn't it? Well, I wasn't aware of the, the sum. Right. You weren't. All right. Uh, did you never see the original tender amount broken down into work packages? Not particularly, no. I, was, I wasn't involved in finance. Can I look at HAR 301180? Now, you weren't, I think, copied into this document. It's an email. Uh, let's just look at it together. It's, it's quite small on the screen. It, thank you. It's from Ray Bailey to Zach Maynard, copied to Simon Lawrence uh, and, uh, and people at Harley, and also Steve Blake at Ryden. Grenfell internal trimming out. And it says, hi, Zach. And I'd like you to look at the uh, second last paragraph. It says, whilst this project may be a little simpler, I don't think we can meet your cost plan of £80,000. Uh, and th this is about, as I say, internal trimming out. Mm -hmm. My question is, were you aware that Ryden had set a budget for the internal fit-out of £80,000? No. Is it fair to say in general terms that Ryden were looking for a low price on the internal window trimmings because Harley would be too expensive to carry out that work? I wasn't involved in this, so I, I can't comment on whether they were looking for a cheaper price or not. Right. Um, Leave aside whether Harley would, would carry out that work. Were you aware that uh, Ryden were looking for the lowest price they could find, or a low price, they put it that way, on the internal window trimmings at all? I was aware they were looking at different subcontractors, which tells me they were probably looking for a lower price, yes. Right. Can we get back then to a topic we looked at this morning in brief, which was cavity barriers? Uh, can I ask you to look first, please, at TMO 1004791, page 265. This is the Ryden TMO contract document, and this, when we see it, is a schedule of contract information for the project, and it lists documents that Ryden were provided with. My first question to you, Mr O'Connor, is did you ever look at this document during your time on the project? I don't remember seeing it, no. Right. Would it not have been an important document for a project manager to see and understand and have in mind? Yes, probably. Can you explain why you didn't? I wasn't. I don't think it was issued to me. It wasn't issued to you. Uh, uh, presumably, the, the contract was issued to you in the sense that it was made available to you. Yeah. Uh, and, and this would have been part of the contract, no? Yeah, I think, like I said just this morning, I didn't make um, no, an active effort to read the contract. No, and that would mean you didn't make an active effort to read this schedule either. Yes. Right. But as, as project manager, would that not have, not have been your responsibility and in your mind that you intended to carry out? Well, to read the contract. To read the contract and look for the schedule of contract information. Not, not as such. Now, this was my first project as project manager. R right. On that score, let me ask you, you say it was your first project as project manager. I appreciate that. Did anybody at Ryden give you any induction or training into what to do as a project manager? No. So when you were appointed or promoted to project manager, did nobody give you any guidance about what you should be doing, what documents you should be looking at? No. So you were just left to your own devices? Well, I had um, Steve Blake and Simon Lawrence for support, but there was no um, training or you know, that sort of thing to right. say, make sure you read this document or make sure you read that document. Right. And this was your first job as project manager ever? Yes. Right. Uh, can I ask you to look at page 269, which is four pages on within the schedule, and look together, please, at item 170. Um, this is uh, LO 1212 spec 001 structural performance dated the 1st of March 2013, 23 pages. Um, now, I'm going to assume uh, that you wouldn't have read this document, but I wonder whether you'd read that one. Um, it, it's a specification produced by Curtin's Consulting. Were you familiar with who Curtin's Consulting were? Yes. <coughs> you were? And were you aware that they had produced a 23-page specification? 
I believe I had seen the curtains one, yes. Right. Let's look at this. Uh, it's at ART 50914, please. And I'd like to go... I'd like, we'll look at the first page, actually. It's dated the 1st of March 2013, and it's entitled Structural Performance Specification for the Design, Supply and Application of Overcladding Systems to Grenfell Tower for Studio E. So just looking at its first page, do you think you saw this at the time? I don't recall seeing right. that. OK. Uh, you say you thought you were familiar with this document. Um, let's see if we can do a bit better. Go to page 9, please. I just want to ask you something specific about it. Um, this is under the rubric design, top of the page. There's the heading under section 6. And it says this. Let's look at it together. In designing his overcladding systems, the constructor must take full account of the ge geographical location of these buildings and the climate thereabouts. In particular, he needs to consider the effects of, and then there's a long list of things. And then the third from bottom bullet, or dash, says the need for effective fire barriers. Do you remember seeing this at the time in this document? No. Do you, do you remember at the time knowing that it was important for the contractor to ensure that there were effective fire barriers? Well, I knew, I knew there was discussion around the fire barriers because I'd seen the emails between John Hoban of Building Control, Harley. Um, I think Carl Stokes is probably involved in it as well. Right. What process did you have in place to ensure that your subcontractors, which would include Harley and Studio E, would consider the need for effective fire barriers, as this document says? Sorry, can you reword that for me? Yes. Did you... Was there any process in place at Harley to make sure that the subcontractors, Harley and Studio E, thought about effective fire barriers? I don't know if there was a process in place, but like I said, I, 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 saw, I saw emails that told me that they were talking about effective fire barriers under certain regulations. Now, in your statement, and I think we saw it earlier, and for our note that it's paragraph 13, you say you expected the designs prepared by Studio E, Max Fordham and other specialist subcontractors to have been prepared in line with the building regulations and other safe fire safety requirements. My question is this. Do, do you accept that it was Ryden's ultimate responsibility, overall responsibility, for the designs that it passed to the TMO to make sure that the requirements for cavity barriers in the legislation were complied with? Now, yes. At the time, probably not. Right. Thank you. Uh, uh, can we look at a document, RYD 30016000? This is an email from Jordan Edelman at eBrit Services of the 21st of August 2014 to Adam Marriott. See that? Yep. Um, now, you're not, you're not copied in on this but I just want to show the contents to you. Afternoon, Adam, he says. I've been speaking with Simon O'Connor in regards to the fire protection and fire stopping inquiries for the Grenfell Tower Regeneration Project, and Simon has advised me to contact yourself in regards to being included on the package inquiries. I understand from Simon that there may be an intumescent FP treatment requirement for the structural steel and maybe some fire stopping works to follow and wish to note our interest for this package. Now, first of all, e eBrit Services, who were they? I don't know. OK. Um, do you recall the conversation that Mr Marriott is relaying to Mr Edelman in this email? So this is from Jordan to Adam, yes? This is from Jordan Edelman to Adam Marriott, yes. So he would have been, um, speaking crudely, but he would have been selling his wares... Um, so he would have got hold of my phone number and gave me a call to try and get on the list for tendering or winning some work. Yes. I, it's my fault I may have confused you by getting the names the wrong way around. This is Mr Edelman relaying to Adam Marriott a conversation that he, Mr Edelman, has had with you. My, let me repeat my question because I have unfortunately confused you with it. Do you remember having a conversation with Jordan Edelman about the fire protection and fire stopping inquiries? No. Right. Do you remember whether you discussed uh, intumescent FP treatment with him? I don't know what that is, so no. Right. Because he says, I understand from Simon, that there may be an intumescent FP treatment requirement for the structural steel. 
but you say you don't recall the conversation and you don't know what an intumescent FP treatment is. No. Have you, can you explain how Mr. Edelman um, came to write this in an email to Mr. Marriott, unless you had said what he says there? I can't explain that. I mean, he doesn't use my second name in that either. Well, he does it, he does at the top of the email. He says, I've been speaking with Simon O'Connor, which is you. No, I don't know how he would come about that. Right. Unless I'd got that from, from somewhere, but uh, it's not something that brings a bell to me. I don't think I know what FP treatment is now. Right. Did, did Mr Marriott, who receives this email, ever come to you and, and, and say that you, he understood that you and Mr Edelman ha had had a conversation uh, either about fast stopping or about intumescent FP treatments? Not that I recall. Did, do you remember having uh, any conversation with Mr Edelman of eBrit? No. Can I ask you to look at RYD 318724, please? Uh, this is an email, and I'd like just to look at the bottom email on page one, dated the 24th of September 2014 from you, Mr O'Connor, to Neil Crawford, subject building control. And you say there, morning Neil, following an FRA yesterday on Grenfell Tower, the assessor asked if the LFB had been issued a copy of the building control application form for comment. Can you please advise if they were issued a copy? You see that? I do. And then now let's look at the top email together where Neil Crawford um, comes back to you um, a little bit later the same day, 24th of September 2014 and a copy to Simon Lawrence, and he says, Hi, Simon, I'm not aware if the LFB have been given a copy of the building control application for comment. I know that Paul Hansen is the RBKC building control fire officer, and he prefers to escalate any fire issues he's unsure about to the LFB via his contacts. I'm sending out a pack of information today to John Hoban, as agreed with Simon Lawrence, after yesterday's meeting. And then he says, I spoke to John Hoban yesterday afternoon whilst on the Academy site and mentioned Grenfell in passing. He mentioned he's away for three weeks. Uh, three weeks holiday as of the 9th of October to um, uh, as of the 9th of October dot 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 uh, did you uh, ever follow up this conversation with Mr Lawrence or Mr Crawford I don't believe so I don't I can't recall but I, I don't believe so right did you ever follow up with the LFB Um, <coughs> I, I don't recall. I know I was. We had the fire brigade down on site quite often, but um, I don't recall if it was regarding this. Right. Can you look, please, at R Y D three zero one eight nine six three? Let's look together at. Uh, the email at the top of page one on that page, which is an email from John Hoban of the 29th of September 2014 to you, Mr O'Connor, copy to Simon, uh, to Simon Lawrence. You see that? Okay. And he says, Dear Simon, uh, the building regulations 2010 as amended, Grenfell Tower, concerning our brief discussion this morning relating to the Grenfell Tower project. Please find detail below the last emails that I have in my possession relating to building regulation matters for your information. So it looks as if you did have a brief conversation on the 29th of September 2014 with Mr. Hoban at RBKC Building Control. Looks from this. I don't recall that conversation. R right. Do, do you recall any conversation around this time with Mr. Hoban on the subject uh, that he is talking about? Not specifically. I mean, it was six years ago, so no, not, not, not specifically. If we look at the subject, forward Grenfell Tower, Grenfell Road refurbishment, fire strategy P2, does that trigger a recollection about what you might have discussed with Mr. Hoban at that time? So that Grenfell Road... Um, The only thing I can think, and I don't know if it's relevant or not, is we was using the uh, 
fire brigade service road to the right hand side of the tower um, for storage etc um, and I, I may have asked him uh, his, his thoughts on that but I, I'd already spoke to the fire brigade regarding that so I don't know Right. Can you ask? Can, can you be? Can you please turn? Sorry to EXO four zero one four three zero. This is an email chain between employees of Ryden, Exova, Studio E, and Harley, and uh, it's a fairly long email discussion. Uh, it, on the 18th of September 2014. Um, can I just ask you to look with me, please, at the bottom of page one? And it goes over the page to page two. And it's an email from Daniel Ankertel Jones on the 18th of September to Neil Crawford, copy to Simon Lawrence and to you, Mr. O'Connor, mm -hmm. and also to Kevin Lamb, who was working with Harley at the time. And the subject is cavity fire barriers. Do you see that? I do. Um, it says, Neil, thank you for your response. The insulation is class naught. Therefore, after reading the correspondence below, I believe the fire barrier in these locations will not be necessary. And uh, then he goes on to say, can you confirm that this is acceptable? Kind regards, Daniel Ankle Jones. Uh, w when you got this email, do you remember looking at it and reading it? I think these are the emails I was, I was referring to earlier. Yes. So the answer to my question is yes, you did? Yes. Yes. Um, you saw his reference to class naught, and you could see it there if we just flip back to the bottom of page one of the email string. Uh, what was your understanding about what he meant, the insulation is class naught? I wouldn't be able to tell you at that time. These were just emails that I was CC'd into, so I, I was just aware there was talk about cavity barriers. Um, I wouldn't have been scrutinising the emails. Why were you copied into these emails, do you think? Because uh, I was project manager on site. Right. At the time, uh, di did you think that because you were, co you were project manager on site and you had been copied in on these, it was important for you to understand what was being said? Um, in reflection, probably yes. But at, at the time, I was just CC'd in, so it was just for information. Right. So you were, again, a spectator on these emails rather than a participant in the yes. detailed information. In general terms, in general terms, uh, you, did you have any... Well, ha, had you, let me try this way. Have you, had you heard of the expression class naught? Yes, in painting terms. Can you just explain a bit further what that means? Um, I, I, I just knew there was a class, a class O paint that um, was put in, I think it was fire escapes. Right. What did that? What did Class O mean? Um, or what did it signify to you? From memory, I think it was something to do with spread of flame. Something to do with the spread of flame. Back. That, I'm talking historically back then. Yes, it, absolutely. I understand that, and I'm certainly not going to stand here and not examine you about your understanding of Class Naught now. But at that time, your understanding was that it was something to do with the spread of flame. Can you tell us where that understanding came from? I just, I don't know, it's just a painting, really, more than anything. Right. Did the statement, the insulation is class naught, concern you at the time? No. You didn't have cause to query it? No, like I say, I was a participant in these conversations. There were people that actually do this for a living, they're qualified to do this. Right. So I was, I was a, just a participant, I was just, you know seeing the email trail go through. Yes. D in, in fact, to be honest, it gave me a little bit of um, comfort that they were talking about fire bricks and cavity barriers and stuff like that. Right. So, so did you understand the relevance of that statement, the insulation is class naught? Probably not completely, no. But you say it gave you comfort. What sort of comfort did it give you? Well, I, I, I knew they were talking about fire um, and their specialists, so it, it's... To, to me, that's positive. OK, so are you saying that, that when he said the insulation is class naught, that was a positive? No, I'm just saying the whole conversation to me was positive. There was, there was an actual conversation asking people's opinions, specialist opinions, about what they thought about 
their their um, knowledge. Right. Did Mr. Ankatul Jones's reference to the insulation as class naught give you any understanding, comfort, feeling about the appropriateness of the insulation? I don't, I don't think I've probably read this in full. Um, I was just aware there was a conversation going on. Fair enough. Um, now, can I ask you to turn to SEA 3011730. This is an email chain between Neil Crawford and Terry Ashton, same day, 18th of September 2014, in which you were also copied. And if we look at the bottom of uh, page one, Terry Ashton at Exover, and I say you're copied in, you're copied in on the next one up, to be fair to you. So let me just show you the scheme. <coughs> and what the email at the bottom of page one is an email from Mr. Ashton to Mr. Crawford. And then Mr. Crawford thanks uh, Terry Ashton the same day and then addresses a question to Daniel Ankatul Jones of Harley, but he copies in Simon Lawrence and you. Can you see that? Yes. So although you don't get the email from Mr. Ashton to Mr. Crawford, you do get Mr. Crawford's response. So let's just take it in stages. He says in the second email, Neil, a material, this is Ashton, material which has a class naught rating is not necessarily non-combustible, although the reverse is invariably true. Some class naught products will burn when exposed to a fully developed fire. In any case, you need to prevent fire spread from one flat to the flat above, as I stated in my earlier email. What isn't clear from the information to hand is whether or not there is a continuous cavity from top to bottom in any part of the cladding, apart from around the column casings, irrespective of the type of insulation. And then the response comes back, uh, and it's, uh, you can see what he says. Daniel, can you confirm your position in relation to Terry's comment below regarding combustibility and continuous cavity paths? And then there's something about uh, KAC and Mr. Hoban there, which I don't think I need to put to you at this point, at least. Um, can I just ask you, uh, did, did you, when you got this email uh, from Mr. Crawford by way of copy, did you look at the email from Mr. Ashton to Mr. Crawford to which this was a response? I, I can't be sure. Would it have been your habit to do so at the time? When um, you got the, an email like this, would you have looked down the chain to see what the conversation was about? Um, there was such large quantity of email <coughs> traffic that... I can't honestly say yes. I would go through every single trail, um, and you know, so I, I would say no, probably not. Do you have any recollection of uh, being told that a material which has a class naught rating is not necessarily non-combustible? No. Did it alert you to the fact that whether or not the insulation product was class naught? Um, there was that was something to consider, so far as safe use on Grenfell Tower was concerned. Well, I think, like I said this morning, my my assumption was the specialist that designed this had taken all this into account. Um, I'm not qualified to do that. After you received that email, what do you know whether you or anybody else at Ryden undertook any investigations to satisfy yourself or Ryden that the insulation was compliant with the building regulations? Not me personally, but I know there was more email traffic on this subject, wasn't there? Uh, yes, and I'm just asking for your recollection. But, but um, leave aside the emails which we can read. Do you recall any internal discussion about investigations into whether or not this product no. should be used? No. Can I ask you then, please, to turn or be shown EXO 4011433? This is an email the following year, in the March of 2015, in the context of a uh, long email chain between uh, RBKC Building Control, Siderize, Harley, Studio E, and Ryden, <coughs> and Terry Ashton at Exover. Uh, and you don't see all of these, but you see, I think, some of these. Um, this particular one at page one is copied to you, sec the, the lower part of the page. Uh, in fact, both emails are. And there's an email from John Hoban of the 30th of March 2015 uh, to uh, various recipients, including you. Can you see that? I do. 
subject Grenfell Tower fire stopping. Uh, and this is from John Hoban at RBKC, as you can see. And it says, Building Regulations 2010, Grenfell Tower. Please find detail below a copy of an email sent to various persons on the 20th of March concerning the topic of relating fire stopping of the compartment floors to the building. I would advise you that it's my interpretation of diagram 33 of approved document B that is the detail between the car is that the detail between compartment floors and external cladding is not a cavity barrier. Therefore, it must be fire stopped to at least the standard of the existing compartment floor, 120 minutes. Therefore, the methods described in clause 9.13 would not be appropriate in this particular case. Uh, and then you can see at the top, uh, Ricky Kay, who's the National Facades Manager at Ciderize, uh, responds to John Hoban uh, and Harley and Neil Crawford at Studio E, and also to you as a, as a copy, as well as Mr. Ashton. And he says, can, can somebody forward over a drawing, the build-up of the cladding, so that my technical officer can evaluate and forward an official response with the Ciderize product specification? Do you remember whether you took any steps to ensure that such a drawing was sent? I wouldn't have taken steps to ensure. Do you know whether any steps were taken to ensure that such a drawing was sent, whether it was you or anybody else? I would expect Harley to have responded to that. Do you know whether they did? I don't know if they did. Can I ask you to look at RYD 3037449? And let's look at the uh, top email. I don't think you've got the one below it. This is from Simon Lawrence to Chris Mort at Ciderize. Uh, And it provokes a response from Ben Bailey. And you're copied in on that response at the top of the page, 30th of March 2015. And the request from Ben Bailey is, Simon, is there a building fire strategy document and some information on internal finishes that you can send over for me to pass on to Ciderize? Was there a building fire strategy document that you were aware of which could have been passed on? I don't recall. Um, I, I wouldn't have responded to anybody. I was just CC'd into it. So, I, you know, I, I wouldn't have actioned that. Right. We, we, we can see that there is also a reply to this from Simon Lawrence. That's the 31st of March, the next day, and it's at RYD 307478, page one, please. He answers the question, and he says, Morning, Ben. Do you see that? Yep. Uh, uh, and he says, Morning, Ben. Yes, there is, but it only relates to the bottom four levels where we are constructing new... I'll read it all to you. Uh, As we are constructing you, the fire ratings are in line with the current regs, proof document B. Anything above that is existing, and there is no record showing what fire rating the slabs and walls, internal and external, were constructed to when the building was originally built back in 1974. We know that it's unlikely that the party walls, etc., would be in line with current regulations. However, this can't be proved without extensive surveys and specialist analysis. Unfortunately, that's what you get with refurb because we can't prove otherwise the building control officers will revert to current regs on a better-to-be-safe-than-sorry approach. Now, um, you saw this document as a, as a copy. Uh, um, Mr Lawrence gave some evidence to the inquiry um, this week, on the 20th of July 2020, on the, the basis of his understanding where he says in this email it only relates to the bottom four levels which we are constructing new. The the building fire strategy document only relates to the bottom four levels which we are constructing new. And he told the inquiry that on reflecting on the documents, he thinks he, he now thinks he misunderstood at the time what he was being asked for. And he thinks that he was referring to the fire strategy drawings from Studio E. Uh, and that's why he thinks, that, as he told us, he answered incorrectly. And just for our own internal reference, that's page 103 at line 16 to 21 of day 23. I, I'm interested in your understanding, uh, Mr O'Connor. Do, what was your understanding of Mr Lawrence's email back to Ben Bailey uh, when he said that the fire strategy only related to the bottom floor levels? I don't... I- I couldn't be sure, um, unless he was referring to the um, fire risk assessment we did on the bottom four floors. 
Did you have a view at the time at all about whether Mr Lawrence was right or wrong when he said that the fire building, fire strategy document related only to the bottom four levels? I think, I think I've think i made it quite clear earlier on the day. I, 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 had that, I don't have that extensive knowledge of whether it would just include the bottom four floors or the entire building. Right. So, so right, very well. So you can't comment or, or, and help us as to whether you had a different view from Mr Lawrence about, the, about what this document covered? No, I can't. I, I, All right. Now, uh, it, it appears that uh, Ciderize say that they asked Harley for this document but never got it, uh, and that the fire strategy was never actually provided to Ciderize. Do you have a recollection of whether you or Simon Lawrence sent the fire strategy to Harley in order to give to Ciderize, as Ciderize had asked? I don't recall. I don't think so. I don't think I would have done. Right. I can't comment for Simon. OK. Well, we know, that we are told that Ciderize didn't get it. Can you think of any reason that you would be aware of why Ciderize never got the fire strategy document they were after? No. Can I ask you, then, to uh, look at RYD 3039964, turning away from uh, the discussion about uh, the, the strategy document and onto a slightly different aspect of the same topic. This is an email from Simon Lawrence to Daniel Osgood, copied to you, Mr O'Connor, of the 27th of April 2015. And the subject is Grenfell Harley cladding. And he says, morning, Danny. I understand you've landed at Grenfell OK this morning and are getting your head around Harley's facade package and the cladding. I have filed all the information that we have, drawing and material info in the following location. And then there's a long um, uh, filing location. Just out of interest and in light of your evidence this morning about, um, about management systems, can you describe what this, this is, this drive, M, maintenance projects, jobs, current yeah, That's jobs. the RMS. That is the RMS. Oh, that's the RMS. Right, I see. OK. I'm sure it'll take a few days or so to get to grips with it, so happy reading. Please pay particular attention to the fire break spec and insulation guide to ensure that they install correctly before any building control inspection. I'm just interested in that last sentence. Please pay particular attention to the fire break spec and insulation guide. Do you know what the fire break spec and insulation guide was uh, that Mr Lawrence was referring to? I would imagine it'd be Harley's spec because it's got Harley facades at the end of the, uh, the strap line for the RMS. Right. You, you imagine it. Can we just see if we can nail this down then? It's, there are two documents perhaps we should look at. The first is SIL 50228, please. Uh, this is a, a Ciderize uh, document, uh, Ciderize RH and RV cavity barriers for use in the external envelope or fabric of buildings. Was this the fire break spec that you saw or that was sent? I, I, I can't recall. Uh, let's look at CEL 6013. Uh, was this the insulation guide that was referred to in the email? I can't recall, sorry. I Have you ever seen this document before? I don't recall seeing it back then, no. Right. You've seen it since, have you? Uh, no, I've seen the other one since. I see. Have you seen this one since? I don't recall seeing this, no. Okay. Going back to the email, if we can, please. RYD 3039964. You were copied in on this email. Did you yourself take any steps to understand what the documents were to which Mr. Lawrence was referring when he said fire break spec and insulation guide? I, I may well have done, but I don't. I can't say I definitely did. Right. What steps did you take to ensure that Mr. Lawrence's instructions were carried out? Um, I probably had a bit of a meeting with Danny. Okay. Well, Danny was good. Sorry. 
what steps did you take to ensure that, in general terms, cavity barriers were correctly positioned and installed within the uh, rain screen facade? Well, that goes back to our inspection procedures that I spoke about this morning. Whereas here we go out of the drawing and inspect the uh, cavity barriers in installed prior to building control being invited to see them. Right. Well, let's just turn then to the topic of installation, uh, which you, you're referring to, and follow that up. Can I ask you to look at something you've not seen bef before this, this inquiry, perhaps, which is the report of Dr Lane, who is one of the inquiry's experts. And this is BLAR 703 at page 38. And this is, I should just tell you, Dr Lane's report to the inquiry of the 12th of April 2018 Section 8, and I'd just like to look at a, a diagram with you, it, figure 8.39 on page 38, and it's in pa uh, paragraph 8.9.34, and this is uh, a, 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 a diagram showing the cavity barriers specified for the facade compared with the as-built drawing. Uh, did you ever attempt to compare the location of the horizontal cavity barriers, which you can see there on the right-hand side in the, in the diagram, with the location, sorry, the horizontal cavity barriers, which you can see there, contained in the as-built drawings, with the location of the cavity barriers as actually installed? Not personally, probably not. Did you ever record the results of your installation inspections anywhere, specifically in relation to cavity barriers? I wouldn't have done the inspections. It would have been um, the external manager, Daniel. Right. Did Mr Osgood record the results of his inspections in relation to the cavity barriers to make sure uh, that the installation com complied with or followed the, the design drawings? I would imagine so, yes, and so would the clerk of works, and building control for that matter. If cavity barriers were placed in different locations from those shown on the design drawings, do you agree that that would constitute defective workmanship? Yes. And it would be defective workmanship which Ryden, through its on-site team, would be responsible for identifying and ensuring was rectified? Yes, as well as the building control and everybody else. Well, I'm not asking about them, I'm asking about Ryden. Yes. What, what about if a cavity barrier was installed the wrong way round? In other words, upside down? I would expect them to notice that. And what if about a, a horizontal cavity barrier was installed in a vertical position? Again, so, I would expect them to notice that. Right. And would you accept again that Ryden was ultimately responsible for identifying and rectifying any of those kinds of problems? Yes. Did you ever... Uh, were you ever alerted to any concerns regarding the location of the cavity barriers by anybody? The location of them? Yes. Not that I'm aware of, no. Were you ever aware of any concerns regarding the workmanship in relation to the installation of cavity barriers? I think there was an email from me to Harley um, where I think they were making comments of something being in the wrong way around. That was with, with regard to water ingress and not cavity barriers, though. Uh, can we look at page 32 and look at figure 834, please? That's back six pages or so in the same document. This is uh, a photograph showing insulation affixed to column and rain screen cladding brackets. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr Lane has inserted some comments in boxes there. Yep. You can see those. This shows cavities which were unfilled where they meet the cavity barriers, doesn't it? It does. Uh, and if you now move to page 40 and look at figure 8.42, please. Page 40, 8.42, we can see that uh, here a, a junction of a column and a spandrel horizontal cavity barrier. Uh, and that shows, just looking at the picture, that the cavity barrier was poorly fitted to the exterior of flat in this case, flat 12. Do you accept that? Do you, see, do you agree with that? I can see that, yes. Did you ever consider that cavities were created where the precast concrete intersected with the cavity barrier 
because of ridges in the precast concrete. And we can see the ridges there in the column. I wasn't actually on the project when any of the columns were completed. Uh, uh, no, but did you ever consider during your time on the project that there would be cavities where the uh, edges of the cavity barriers would have met the, uh, the columns because there were ridges, vertical ridges, or trenches, or grooves, if you like, in the columns? No, because like I said, this section of work wasn't... It was not even started when I left. And didn't you realise that the cavities would not be filled by the cavity barriers, at least in those locations? Uh, no. And, and like I say, I would expect specialists to pick that up, not, not me. Um, and I, th I think if we was looking at it, maybe I would have seen it, but I wasn't there. Did Looking at, uh, at figure 842, did you ever observe any workmanship like that during the time when you inspected? I can't see it, sorry. You can't see... 8.42. Uh, it should still be on the screen. Uh, it's figure 8.42. Oh, sorry, I was looking at the numbers on the side. Uh, I'm so sorry. No, figure 8.42, junction of column and spandrel horizontal cavity bar. It says poorly fitting at edges. And my question is, I'll ask it again, did you ever observe any workmanship like that? Um, not that I recall, no. If you had done, would you have appreciated that this, was a, that this presented a problem and asked for it to be rectified? I'd like to say yes. Um. Uh, another example. Can you go to page 43 and look, please, with me at figure 8.46? And here we have a photograph of a horizontal column cavity barrier showing roughly cut rear faces and roughly cut edges. Do you see that? I do. Do you agree that that shows poor work, poor cutting, leaving those sort of edges in that condition? Um, it, it certainly exposes the grooves or ridges to which you referred to earlier. And if you look at the photograph down, uh, Dr. Lane says, this quality of preparation led to a poor fit when installed, as shown in figure 8.47. And, and if we look at 8.47 closely, Mr. O'Connor, you can see how uh, the horizontal cavity barrier fitted very poorly. Can you see that? She explains how in, in detail. I okay. can. Uh, do, do you agree that these are significant workmanship issues? Um. Yes, I suppose, yeah. And that they happened on your watch? They didn't happen on my watch, because I wasn't there. So this happened after your time, is that right? There was, n there was nothing on the columns, because the mask columns were too close. OK. In his witness statement, Ben Bailey of Harley said that he was shocked by the photographs in, in, these re in this report. Are you shocked? Yes. Do you know, and I know you... You say you weren't there at the time, but can you explain how shockingly poor workmanship was allowed to happen unchecked? Can you give us an insight into that? I can't, because I wasn't there, so I can't comment on what was going on when I wasn't present. Is this kind of workmanship something that you would have expected Ryden's quality assurance and inspection regime to have picked up? Yes. Are you aware of any defects in that process during your time which would explain why this kind of quality of workmanship wasn't picked up? Not that I'm aware of, no. Can I ask you to go to RYD 82733, please? This is uh, an inspection, site inspection report. Uh, created by John Rowan and Partners. They're the clerk, to, clerk of works, aren't they? Yes. And it's dated the 16th of June, 2015, and while you were still uh, engaged on the project as, as project manager. Yes. Let's uh, look at the bottom of page one um, under site, review site inspection log. Uh, can you see it says... Uh, 
Uh, Ryden indicated at site meeting today they are 12 weeks behind on the contract program. At the site meeting, a recovery program was issued, and this will, according to, uh, accordingly to Ryden's, pull back the lost time to enable the contract to finish on time, 23rd of October 2015. Do you, do, you, do you remember that uh, as a fact? At that stage, you were very behind on the project? Well, I think I said earlier, and it was before this, that we were nine weeks behind, so it kind of makes sense, if I'm honest. Yes, I see. Because we, was, we wasn't pulling time back. It was it was moving out, if anything. Yeah. And just uh, continuing in that box, it, a few lines down, it says, Rydens are progressing with the tender detail of the new, of the top roof. New cladding details and panels are being procured. Again, is that... The panels, is that a reference to the ACM panels at that stage? Uh, that sounds to me like it's talking about the crown. Right. I think. It doesn't say crown, but reading it, top roof, um, the only thing that was on the roof was the crown. Yes, I follow. Can we turn the, to, the, to the next page of this, page two, please? And uh, four-fifths of the way down the page, you'll see a heading, Review Site Inspection Log Building Control. Note, last building control site visit was the same as before, Friday 15th May 2015. The only observation was that further details of the cladding fire breaks were required, riding to confirm if they have done this. And I just want to ask you about those few last words there, riding to confirm if they have done this. Do you, do you agree that this was Ryden's responsibility? Um, that, that further details of the cladding fire breaks were required? It would have been Ryden's responsibility to get it and pass it on, yes. Right, and within Ryden, it would have been your responsibility, yes? Mine or Simon's, yes. But as, pro as project manager, you would have had that within your remit? Possibly. Um, well, you say possibly, you don't sound very sure. I, I don't think it would, yeah, um, it, it would have been me or Simon. Were you sure about what was in your remit, Mr. O'Connor? Yes. So why are you not sure when answering my question as to whether or not it fell within your remit to obtain further details of the cladding fire breaks? Um, I don't know. Uh, OK, um, you, you know, f for me, it's asking for further details. Um, I possibly would have asked someone else for further details to, right. to pass them on. It, it, uh, I mean, forgive me for making this observation, but I do feel I need to ask you about it. You, you don't sound as if you were terribly sure about where your job ended and Simon Lawrence's began. Is that a fair comment? Um, I don't think it's fair. It was six years ago, and um, you're asking me to recollect a, a sentence in a document. There were thousands of documents. I'm trying my best to be honest and just say it would have been myself or Simon Lawrence. I, I can't categorically tell you I did it, and I can't get categorically tell you I didn't do it. I understand. So, I was just asking a question about the, how much certainty you had about the, the, the ambit, you know, the, the, the edges of your remit, and where, what you were responsible for and what you weren't responsible for. Yeah. I, th I think, our, our, you know, Simon would quite often take over on things like this. Um, Do you remember whether you took any steps to action this? In other words, to give the confirmation that the clerk of works had noted here? I think I've already said I, I, I don't. Can I ask you then to turn to RYD 3089251? Now, this is an email dated the 19th of June 2015, so a few days later. And it, it helped me with this because I think we can see what happens here. You, in the second email there, say to Mr. Osgood, uh, subject, site inspection, and it looks as if you attach uh, a, a report. Morning, Danny. Can you please respond to the comment about fire breaks? And you don't copy Mr. Lawrence in. And then he responds to you the same day. Simon, all queries concerning the fire break were addressed and closed out. Building control have stated they do not need to return until we begin to hang panels. Is that what happened with the request? Yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. Well, yes, it is. You can see it is, yes. Is that where it was left, do you think? Yeah, if, if I'm being told it's, it's 
it's closed out and building control don't raise it again, then yes. Right. Can you t explain to us why you passed this request on to Danny Osgood? Because Danny was the external manager. Right. When he came back to you on the 19th of June, were you satisfied with his response? Yes. Did you want to know? Did you not not? Sorry. Did you not want to know from him when the firebreaks questions had been addressed and closed out, and how? Um, I would probably have had a conversation. He was sitting away from me, right. two meters away. So I probably would have had a conversation rather than an email, which, in hindsight, would have been much better. Do you know why the clerk of works thought that there were still outstanding questions when, in fact, according to Mr Osgood, they weren't in relation to fire breaks? No. Now, we can see that Mr Osgood said building control have stated that they do not need to return until we begin to hang panels. Now, this is obviously quite close to the time you left Ryden, but do you know or were you involved in building control's return to site, or was that after your time? I think that was after my time, to be honest. All right. Now, I want to turn to a slightly different topic, which is uh, the cladding installation, RAMS. Uh, can you look, please, at RYD? Minute, how are you getting on generally? Because uh, quite well. This is a very short topic. So I, I, I think there are a lot of quite short topics, but we're getting on pretty well. I, I'm happy to take a break now if you want to. Well, we've Sorry. been running an hour. We would normally run for another hour. <coughs> okay, well, let's. Um, I'm happy to take a break now. Um, yes. yes. Now, if I say quarter for an hour, is that going to be put you in difficulty? No, I don't think so. Well, no. so. That's what we'll do then. We'll have another break, Mr. O'Connor. Excellent. Um, we'll come back at quarter past three. If you go to the usher now, um, please don't talk to anyone about your evidence, yes? No worries. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Yes, would you ask Mr O'Connor to come back, please? <coughs> right, Mr O'Connor? Yep. Very good. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, Mr O'Connor, uh, can I ask you a question about your job description? When you were promoted to site, uh, to project manager, when you were given that role at Ryden, were you ever given a written job, cons job description? No, not that I recall. Did anybody else, or did anybody, I should say, sit you down and say, right, Simon, this is your job description? No. Right. Uh, can I ask you to look at RYD 3044094? And I want to ask you about the cladding installation RAMS. The risk assessment method statement. Uh, this is an email, Ben Bailey to Daniel Osgood, 18th of June 2015, copied to you, Mr. O'Connor, uh, and there are a couple of attachments, one of which, as is clear from the text of the email, says, RAMS for the column cladding installation attached for your file stroke comment. Do you remember receiving that? I, I, I did, obviously, but no, I don't remember. Right. Uh, let's look at the attachment, RYD 3044095. Can I ask you to turn to page one to see it, first of all? It's a Harley document, method statement, installing column cladding, project manager Ben Bailey, site foreman Mark Osborne, brackets, TAF brackets. And at the bottom of page one, it says, this method statement relates to the installation of the vertical column cladding panels on the project. Does that trigger a recollection, my showing you that first page of this document? I can't see what you've just read, sorry. What? Uh, well, um, can you see the first page of it? Yes. Yes, I just read to you uh, the project manager, Ben Bailey, middle of the page, site foreman, Mark Osborne, TAF, and at the bottom of page one, this method statement relates to the installation of the vertical column cladding panels on the project. Sorry, yeah, I can yes. see that now. Does now, does my showing you this first page of this document now trigger a recollection about it? No. Right. Page nine. Uh, page three, please. And I'd like to look at item nine to ten with you. Uh, item nine says, when all the brackets have been installed on the cladding rails, operatives will install the vertical fire brakes in the same position as the internal party walls, marked up, drawing attached, making sure that the joints are butted tightly together and the joints taped with adhesive backed foil O-tape joints against existing concrete should be sealed with suitable intumescent mastic. And then it goes on at 10. Operatives will then fit the 100 millimeter thick insulation around the brackets and fire brakes, taping joints with a class O or class naught adhesive foil tape where necessary. Um, did you take any steps to supervise subcontractors during your time as project manager to ensure that the cladding was fitted as per this RAMS. This is the RAMS for the uh, for the vertical columns. Yes. I wasn't on site for, the, for any works on the vertical columns. Uh, we can see that the date of this document, and perhaps I should have shown you that, uh, was, was during your time. It's dated the 18th of June 2015, so it was produced during your time. Uh, it was sent to you. And my question, I'll ask it again, is did you take any steps uh, to, uh, well, let me try it a different way. Did you take any, any steps to prepare yourself to make sure that subcontractors complied with this? Not at the time, no. We would have done when the, when the work was going ahead. When you left the project, who did you hand over to? Uh, Simon Lawrence. Did you hand him this document and ask him to carry on uh, with it and make sure that installers were supervised to make sure that they complied with items 9 and 10 that I've shown you? Not particularly, but that would, that would be the norm, to make sure that the people are complying with the RAMs. Right. Can I ask you to look at the last page of this document, page 5? This is where it says that the subcontractors are asked to sign and, and uh, confirm they've read and understood the instructions and safety information. During your time on the project, did that happen? To this document? Yes. I wouldn't imagine so, no. Right. Uh, 
Um, I want to ask you one or two questions about workmanship, please. Can you uh, please go to RYD 3027752? And this is an email to you from Claire Williams and a few others concerning some workmanship issues at Grenfell Tower. And it's dated the 15th of January 2015. It's also sent to Jason North and it's copied to Simon Lawrence and Siobhan Rumble and Janice Jones at the TMO. Cladding fixing, stopping people sleeping, two elevations reporting. Uh, and uh, she uh, says to you, Simon, as my voicemail of this morning, two complaints from generally reliable residents, flats 56 and 31. Please let me know what we're doing about this, as we need to put up a notice in the communal areas to show we are addressing this. I've copied that in the housing offices, they will be taking calls too. And then there is a capitalised message, hello Claire, which she's passing on uh, from the occupant of uh, number 56. Today, part of the cladding frame is fitted on the east side and the frames are now rattling away in the wind all night, creating a lot of disturbance. Either they've not been fastened properly or, more seriously, the threaded metal studs are coming off. This is quite a serious situation. This is shoddy workmanship and is posing a great danger to everyone concerned. Please look into this on an urgent basis and let the residents know what's going on. Uh, I'm sure that you or Ridens will receive complaints from other residents also. Um, First question is, was it common for um, Claire Williams uh, to ring you uh, in respect of workmanship issues? Um, not generally, no. She would ring me about various issues, but not, not generally. The message that she was passing on from this resident was that this was shoddy workmanship and was posing a great danger to everyone concerned. What steps did you take to go and investigate the allegation of shoddy workmanship? Um, I think... In this situation, I went there myself. Right. Now, let's see if we can pursue the story a bit further. Um, RYD 3088038, please. This is an email chain which includes you the next day. So, uh, as you can see, the 16th of January. And it starts at the bottom of page one where Claire Williams writes to Simon Lawrence, copied to you, Mr O'Connor, and also Peter Madison of the TMO. Simon, can I please have a formal response to the comments below by the end of play on Monday, 19th Jan? I know that Simon O'Connor had had Harley check on 15th of Jan that all was well, but I, do not, but I do not need to have any misinformation out there about the fixings to Grenfell which would undermine confidence in the project. And then you respond to her the same day uh, I'm sorry, you, you, you passed this on, I'm sorry, to uh, Rob Maxwell, copy to Simon Lawrence. Rob, we will need you to investigate this allegation and put together a professional and accurate response to this as soon as possible. Uh, and then you also send a message to Mr. Grint, subject cladding rattling. FYI, can you please chase this up on Monday? Uh, did you ask Harley to check? Check what the rattling was. Check the rattling and the fixing of the yes uh, of the cladding. Did, did you ever get an explanation about why it was that the panels were flapping about in the wind? Yeah, I don't think it was panels. Um, I think it was rails. And it's common practice to pin a rail on a building of that size. Um, you, you don't fix it permanently. You pin it while you're lining it up, um, and they will rattle. Did you get a report back from Harley that they had checked and all was well? Um, yes, I, I believe that's what they told me. I'm not, I'm not sure in writing, but yeah. Can we look at RYD 3028016, please? This is an email a day on the same day uh, where Claire Williams sends Simon Lawrence a message copying you in and also Christina Stefanu on the same subject, cladding rattling. And she says, Simon, that's Simon Lawrence, uh, I think that as well as having your response, this is the second paragraph, it would be useful to, for Ryden to visit this home and look at the fixings and talk with the resident. The Patel family are leaseholders and have been to every consultation. They are very conscientious about being up to date with information and I want to be able to reassure them. Currently, you understand they have some serious concerns. Please confirm, Claire Williams. Uh, 
Can I ask you why this workmanship issue wasn't picked up by Ryden's internal processes? Because it wasn't complete. Does that mean that you wouldn't actually inspect for the quality of workmanship until the work was complete? Well, I think it's unfair to, to snag work that's in progress. Um, well, if I understood what you said a moment ago, it, the work, as you say, was in progress. It hadn't been finally fixed. Yes. Is that the point? That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. yeah. So it was pinned into place, but not actually fixed. I mean, it's an unfortunate that it's left pinned into place so that it can rattle in the wind. Yeah. And whether it should have been or not is another question, but it was not I mean, it, finally it, fixed. It was secure. It wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. But I can understand being, you know, it was really windy around the tower, um, and I can understand the frustrations of the residents yeah. um, trying to sleep with metal to metal clanging together all night long. Yeah, I understand that. So why was a, a partly constructed piece of the structure left in a way that would deserve residents? Um, it, it wasn't done intentionally. Um, and I, I, I'm fairly sure that after this, we, we managed to get a system where we could string from top to bottom and fix it more rigidly. Now, do you remember whether uh, anybody from Ryden did visit uh, this occupant in their flat and look at the fixings and talk with the resident? That would probably be myself and Christina. Do you remember doing that? I don't, but I would generally go and see um, leaseholders that show concern. Right. Now, can we look at RYD 3028018, please? Uh, this is an email uh, only a few minutes later, in fact, where there's some photographs attached to it. And Claire Williams says to Simon Lawrence, copy to you, clapping, rattling, Simons, that's to both of you, is there not a levelling mechanism, washers or similar? The photo shows a l l clear gap between the cladding angle and the wall, which presumably varies from elevation to elevation. Did you know the answer to the question she was asking? No. I don't think so. I don't recall that email. I mean, the building... Uh, I'm guessing she's talking about the in and out of... Of the, of the frame, but you know, the building was 28 storeys high, and it, it, it varied. It. So that she's probably right; there probably would be gaps, but I don't remember responding to it at all. Did the complaint generally give you cause for concern about Harley's work? No. Did you agree with Claire Williams' assessment that the photograph provided by Mr. Patel showed that there was a clear gap between the cladding angle and the wall? I don't think I responded. No, that may be, but in your mind, did you agree with Claire Williams's assessment? I can't, I, I can't recall, honestly, if I did agree or didn't agree. Claire would quite often um, send me things that were, weren't relevant. Did this exchange and this event take, take you to, uh, or provoke you to ensure that Harley were working to a proper standard of workmanship? No, I, I thought they were. Um, I think I showed my concerns of... of of, of them in an earlier email when they first started the project. Can we look at RYD 3028021? Let's look at the top of the page together. This is you to Claire Williams, 16th of January. Same subject, <coughs> uh, and also to Simon Lawrence and Peter Madison, clapping, rattling, afternoon, Claire. Following your original email yesterday, we already requested all fixing were checked immediately and a written response provided. As discussed, I will visit Mr. Patel on Monday to answer any queries or concerns he may have. Uh, did you ever receive uh, a response uh, from uh, Harley? Um, I believe I probably did. Did you put any additional safeguards in place to make sure that Harley were fitting to a proper and safe standard as a response of this complaint? Um, I don't think they were fitting to an unsafe standard um, at this point, not, not with the rails and whatnot. Um, but I did ask them to, to make sure that they fixed rails adequately so they didn't rattle around in the, in the evening to, right. to make more residents complain or have concern. Did you go back and carry out a final inspection to make sure that Harley had put this problem right? Uh, I probably wouldn't have done, but um, one of the external manager would have done. Uh, can I ask you then to look at RYD 303973? 
and I'd like you to have pages one and two of this email string put up together. It's an email chain between you and Linda Prentice of the TMO uh, on the 17th of April 2015, and I'd like you to look at the bottom of page one and the top of page two. Uh, she uh, writes to you on the 17th of April 2015, re-185, hi Simon, I re just received a text from David Collins in flat 185 stating he found a part of the window installation hanging loose this morning. He's taken it into his house as he didn't want it to fall 18 floors. And also that there is some polythene on the back of one of the cladding panels which is blowing in the wind and has nearly come off on the north facing side. He's asked if this can be taken off safely. Now your response was to forward the message to Ben Bailey at Harley's as we can see on page one. If you look at that, Ben, can you please can you deal with this, please? 185 is a problem property and is questioning the quality of the install. He will shout this from the rooftops if not resolved promptly. And what, what criteria did you judge whether a property was, quotes, a problem property, Mr O'Connor? Yeah, I think my wording probably wasn't great there. So 185 it was actually owned by a absent leaseholder. Um, and he had done a huge amount of work in his property prior to us coming along. Um, with drop ceilings and you know, top of the range surround sound, and uh, they really didn't want all the pipe work to come through their front door and across their ceilings. That they'd they'd, they'd made a huge effort in that flat, and they just wasn't happy with. It. And I think, in honesty, um, I don't think they were told by the TMO exactly what they were getting in the first place. Um, so what they actually got was something different than what was offered in the be in the beginning. So when you say problem property, do you mean problem occupant? No, I mean, it, it, is, it was a problem, I won't say problem's the wrong word, but a difficult property, because there was so much done to it, um, you know, that, that we, ha we had to try and get, get over. The occupant himself was, was, was okay. It looks as if what you're saying is that 185 is a problem property because the occupant is questioning the quality of the installation. No, not Is that at what all. you meant? No, not at all. Right. Then you go on to say, he will shout this from the rooftops if not resolved promptly. Is he it fair to say that... Sorry, sorry. sorry you to say uh, is it fair to say that you're expressing concern that if Ryden doesn't remedy this problem promptly, Mr Collins would share his concerns with other residents? He was an active part of the uh, Grenfell blog, an active part of uh, the, the group that sort of represented the block. Um, I think it, it, it's you know it, it's, it's it's positive for us to try and you know keep that enclosed rather than raising concerns that I didn't feel were you know massive concerns. Did you not think that his concern was worth taking seriously? His concern of well that he's expressed or that she has expressed as recorded to you in the text that she, uh, that Linda Prentice had received from him. Yeah, I mean, the, the plastic coming off is, is the plastic backing that was on every single panel. Um, and that doesn't come off until you are coming to the close of the project. Um, and the, the, the piece of thing he was saying was hanging off, I think, was mastic. I mean, it was nothing I would say that was fundamentally wrong. So you thought you might overreact? Um, yeah, possibly. Um, ben Bailey says, in his response... at the very top there, he says, yep, I'll ask Taff to go and have a look. Do you know whether Taff did? Um, I, I, yes, I think Taff did, and I, I think I also went up to see the resident as well. Oh, and did you have a discussion with the resident? Yes. And what was the result of that? I think he was happy with what I was explaining to him. I think that's what I've just explained to you, really. I didn't see a fundamental problem with what was... I mean, I understand, again, the noise was probably more annoying than anything else of the uh, plastic flapping around outside the window. Can I ask you to look at RYD 3039198? It's a slightly different topic. It's an email from Simon Lawrence to you of the 17th of April 2015, so exactly the same day, uh, but not on the subject of plastic backing. Uh, I'd like you to look at... Uh, No, that's a wrong, I think I've given the wrong reference. It's RYD 3039198. That's the one. 
Yes. Simon Lawrence to you, 17th of April. So the same day. And I'd like you to look at the second paragraph, please. Uh, and he says, you also need to expand straight breakdown progress tasks in other areas as well. Uh, it needs to give the client a fuller picture of the works completed. Just counting windows isn't good enough. Looks like you've just done bare minimum to fob client off, and that's not the impression we want to portray. Have another go and send it back across this afternoon, please. Uh, do you agree, or did you agree, with Mr. Lawrence's assessment of your work? No. Is it fair to say that Mr. Lawrence, rightly or wrongly, wasn't satisfied with your performance on this issue? Yes. Do you know what gave rise to Mr. Lawrence's dissatisfaction, as reflected in his email to you here? Um, I think his expectations were different to mine. In what way? Uh, in the way that um, when, I'm when we're presenting to, to a client, um, I, they actually want to hear how many windows had been done not how many floors and what flats, or east and west. Uh, I think that just confuses the matter. At this point, was the project under time pressure? Yes. Cost, I, cost pressure? Um, I, I wouldn't be able to comment. I, I don't know. Can I ask you to look at RYD 402487? This is another email from Simon Lawrence, a little bit later in the year, 27th of May 2015 to you and to Danny Osgood. Now, we looked at this yesterday with Mr. Lawrence when he gave evidence, uh, and it's about the show flat. He says, gents, I've sent an email tonight to Mark explaining my thoughts and asking him to call me when he's on site tomorrow. I thought it best not to copy everyone, so hopefully he doesn't get defensive about the work. I've also made Steve Blake aware so he isn't shocked uh, when he visits tomorrow. Overall, I'm extremely upset that we've got to today, and in my opinion, are nowhere near having the flat in a show condition. It shouldn't take me to visit and notice the issue straight away. Apart from being unfinished in areas, the bouncy window board is a disaster. I can't, still can't understand how it hasn't been noticed before. I'm expected to be called to account from Steve, and quite frankly, I haven't got any good excuses. The only saving grace is that the client's director isn't planning on visiting tomorrow, as first thought. Whatever happens, that flat's got to be top-notch, ready for inspection by the client next week. I expect nothing short of a quality job. Please ensure this happens. It's our last chance. Why was Mr Lawrence extremely upset, Mr O'Connor? Um, again, because he, he hadn't got what he wanted, what he was expecting. Is it fair to say that, looked at in general, he was taking you to task uh, for falling short in quality terms? Yeah. Why was it Ryden's last chance? Last chance before what? I don't know. I mean, it, this, this was a show flat. It's not... And it was empty, so I don't understand why it's our last chance. Can you explain how you'd let uh, Mr Lawrence down, as he describes in this email? I think, like, like I said, we, you know, we had different um, visions on what was happening, um, and he would also get involved uh, and give us ideas that um, sometimes were not achievable. Can you explain how the show flat had, had been left in such an unfinished state, and that it, Mr. Lawrence's expectations were so disappointed? It wasn't in such an unfinished state. So do I take it from that that you disagree with his assessment? Yes. Did you take that up with him? Um, probably, yes. In what way did you take it up with Mr Lawrence? Did you email him or did you ring him? Or did you I think do? he was going to be on site the following week, so I would have expected him then. Right. And what was the upshot of that? Do you remember? I can't, if I'm honest. I think it, it, this, it was ready for the, next, for the client the next week, as far as I remember. And we know you left Ryden in September 2015 after working out your notice period. And you were transferred, in fact, uh, from Grenfell to Lee Bridge in July 2015. Were you taken off the Grenfell Tower project because of quality issues? I was asked to be removed. You were asked to be removed. Yeah. And do you, do you know why that was? Because I'd resigned and um, I didn't think I could fulfil my, my obligations there. Knowing it was still going to continue for a long time, it was best someone took it over at that point. Why were you moved to the Lee Bridge project? Why did you work your notice out on the Lee Bridge project? That's where I was moved to. Yeah, but why? I don't know why. It was, uh, I got an email from Steve Bate asking me to report to Lee Bridge.
during your work on the project, did you become aware at any times with problems concerning the extent of gaps between the edge of the concrete window enclosure and the edge of the new window frames that were going in on the project? Sorry, can you repeat that? Yes, did you ever become aware during your time as project manager of any problems about gaps between the edge of the concrete window enclosure and the edge of the new window frames? Between the concrete and the frames? Yeah, is this the, the, off, the offset angle on the corner of the um, window edge? Well, I, I'm asking you what I had rather thought was a simpler question than that. But, Sorry, uh, I must have interpreted uh, it wrong. Did you ever become aware of any uh, any issue, any problems ab about the, the size of gaps between the edge of the concrete window enclosure and the edge of the window frames, the side of the new window frames? I still don't understand where, you, where you're going. I, I don't. Well, never mind where I'm going. Uh, let me try it a different way. Uh, did you ever become of any problems concerning gaps between the structure, the concrete structure, and the window frames? No, I was I was um, I was aware of the, the the gaps where the old frame remained in, um, <clears throat> but no, I don't I don't do, recall. Do, do you remember uh, any problems about gaps between the newly installed windows and the old timber window surrounds? Yeah, that's what I was just referring to. Right, I, I see. How did you come to know about those issues? Um, I think from doing the show flat. I see. What about before that? I don't think it was thought about before that. Right. What did you do about those gaps? Um, the gaps between the newly installed windows and the old timbo, timber window surrounds. The upstands? Are you, are you referring to the upstands? Sorry. Yes. Um, that's, that's the whole um, thing with Simon Lawrence not being happy because it was bouncy. So I think there was various options floated around. Right. And, and my question really is, when did you become aware of those problems? Was it only with the show... Well, let me ask it this way. Was it only with the show flat, or was it more of a generic problem? I think once we, once we found it on the show flat, I think we were going to find it everywhere. Right. And what did you do about it? Um, I think we went to a number of companies to try and get this trimming done on the internals. And how did that end up? Uh, it ended up with SDP doing it. Can I ask you to go to HAR 403691, please? This is an email from Mr. Lawrence to Studio E and Harley, 16th of October 2014. Uh, and you're copied in on that. Uh, gents, I think we'll definitely have an issue with the kitchen window. We roughly marked it out in flat 145. That was the show flat, I think. And it oversails kitchen stroke lounge screen by a, around 200 millimetres. It looks bad, regards Simon. What did you understand him to mean by oversailing? Yeah, there was a wall, the kitchen wall, and I think the window was there. Right. Was this a problem caused by or connected to the gaps between the concrete window enclosure and the edge of the new window frames? No, I think this was caused by the windows originally were going to be, the concrete within the structure was going to be cut back to make the windows bigger. And I think that's what, because that didn't happen, and that's what caused this. Right. When you refer to oversailing, um, you mean the window frame structurally was wider than the opening into which it ought to fit? Yeah, so you had the wall here, and so from the outside you would have seen the wall through the window. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Did you, do you remember whether you received a response from Harley in respect of this no. question? Not, not absolutely in my head, no. And what about Studio E? Uh, I think there was a response, but I, don't, I can't recall what it was. Right. Um, looking at this gap, then, between the edge of the concrete window enclosures and the edge of the replacement frames, were you aware that the, the gap at the column was specified in the design drawings as varying between 35 millimetres and 90 millimetres? Not at the time, no. Uh, and so that would, it would follow that you weren't aware that it was in some places significantly more than the 90 millimetres suggested in the drawings? No. Mr Millet, I wonder if we're not slightly across purposes here. Um, I may be wrong, but I thought the gap to which you just referred was a gap 
uh, what I understand Mr. O'Connor to have described in this problem is that the windows were too wide. Yeah. I, there wasn't a gap, there was an over-projection. Yes, th I think there are, there are two different questions. Perhaps right. we can... Uh, Perhaps you just ought to clarify that. Yeah, yes. I, I, I was asking you earlier, I was trying to establish that there were two gap problems. The first is between the edge of the concrete window enclosures and the edge of the replacement frames. And the second one was in between the edge of the concrete window enclosures and the um, uh, and the uh, edge of the frames at the jam or the infill panel. You see, there are two different spaces where there are places where there are gaps. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to ask you one or two questions about that. Um, let, let's see if I can take this a bit more quickly. Can you go to BLAS seven zero nine and turn to page thirteen? And look at figure 9.9, .9, please. This is a photograph. Sorry, 9.9. .9. Uh, this is a, yeah, the top photograph. That's the one. Uh, showing uh, unfilled gaps in the, eternal, in the internal window construction at sill level. This is flat 13. And she's measured the gap between the jam of the new window frame and the concrete enclosure on the column at 120 millimetres. Did you know that the gaps were that big? At the time, no. Right. Now, in fact, we can see on this photograph uh, a rubber membrane. There's a black rubber membrane. Do you see? Yep. Behind it, it's, a, it's an EPDM membrane. Uh, and we can also see that a gap has been intermittently filled with adhesive foam. Did you at the time know anything about how the gap that's measured there, the 120 millimetre wide gap, was going to be filled? No, if this was on flat 13 that was so far down the building, I wouldn't have been there, but no, I wasn't aware. But in general terms, I know this is flat 13 yeah. as an example, but in general terms, were you aware how this gap was to be filled? Um, the one going right down? Well, the one that's identified by the double arrow. Um, which is 120 millimetres wide. Um, from memory, it was some sort of insulation, I believe. Right. And do you know, or from memory, can you tell us what that insulation was to be? Um, what product that was? You see, it's not from memory, but I would say probably rock wall. I, I wouldn't know, but that's what I would look at it now and think. But I can't say back then what right. I would have thought. Now, there's, a, there's another gap in respect to the gap between the edge of the concrete windows, the concrete window enclosures on the edge of the replacement frames at the jam or infill panel. Um, let's look at another photograph. It's uh, BLAS 708, please, at page 20. I'd like to look at uh, figure 8.19 there, the, the photograph at the top of the page, Mr. O'Connor. Can you see that? I can. And you can see a cavity. Can okay. you see that there's an original concrete infill panel, and then there's a little cavity uninterrupted to opposite window, and then new infill panel on the left-hand side, insulating core panel. Yep. Can you see that? Yep. Now, if we go to another picture, which is page 20, I'm so sorry, BLA, BLAS. I wonder if we can have this actually on two pages. BLAS 709 at page 20, which is, a, which is a, another chapter of Dr. Lane's report. I'd just like to look at figure 9.13. And if we can have those on two pages, that would be, that would be good. Um, you can see that the cavity in the jam of the window between the concrete infill panel and the new insulating core there has been packed with combustible insulation. And we can yep. see from the markings on the foil face that it's Celotex. You see that? I do. And then finally, can I just show you one other thing? Uh, I've shown you those and show you one other thing. PHYR704, at page 24, and let's look at the f at figures 411 and 412. are on the same uh, they're the same figures and the same thing 
photos taken by HKS at Grenfell Tower in May last year, so this is post-fire, of course. And you can see there that combustible insulation, which is Celotex and Kingspan, has been packed into the cavity at the jam of the window between the concrete infill panel and the new insulating core panel. Can you see that? Yes. Now, those are the gaps I just want to ask you about. At your t in your time, did you consider, or did you know, whether this method of filling these gaps uh, <coughs> was to be used? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but I'm, I may have been, but not that I'm aware of. Did you consider whether the designs in, that you saw provided for this method of filling gap, these gaps? I don't recall. Did you ever consider the fire risks of filling these gaps with that kind of material? Um, Celotex, um, the whole building was covered in Celotex. I don't, I, I probably wouldn't have thought that to be particularly wrong. I know now, but at the time, it, you know, the whole building was covered in it. Did you or anybody else, to your knowledge, at, at Ryden ever ask whether this approach of filling these gaps I've shown you with this material I've shown you was compliant with the building regulations? I doubt it. Uh, 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 fi final gap, which is the gap between the head and the sill of the window frames, and the old timber window surrounds. Just want to look at uh, two more uh, documents. Uh, BLAS, BLAS 709, page 6, please. And I'd just like you to look at uh, figure 9.3. And we can see here that the insulation, if you look at it, has been packed at the head of the window. So this is the head of the window to close the gap between the head of the newly installed frame and the original timber window reveal lining. Can you see that? I can. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and that insulation would have been packed under the lining to the newly installed frame, which I think was a UPVC lining, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Now, let's just look at uh, BLAS 708 at uh, page 17, please. And I'd like you to go to figure 8.16, the bottom of that page. Where, um, again, this is a, this is a uh, a photograph, combustible insulation materials. This is flat 15 living room. This is from underside of internal finishes. Uh, and Dr. Lane notes that combustible insulation or filler material was used or behind the internal finishes, window finishes, sills, jams, and heads. Uh, and there was a zigzag pattern showing an internal finish with glue. Now. First of all, were you aware that gaps at the head and sill of the newly installed window frames and the, and the original timber reveal lining were being filled in the, in the way these photographs show? I knew, that the, um, I knew that the original timber frame was staying in and they were being packed out using that material, yes. You did know that? Um, Silatex, probably. Right. Did you make any attempt to inquire whether filling those gaps with this insulation material complied with building regulations I think I think like I said a little while ago I didn't I didn't see it particularly as a as an issue as the whole building was being covered in it and someone far more intelligent than me had designed it did you uh, make any attempt to inquire whether filling the gaps with this material in this way was an unplanned ad hoc measure to deal with unanticipated gaps I don't think so no were these gaps that we've seen here something you expected on this project or didn't expect? Uh, I don't think I would have expected them to be as different as you've shown. Right. And does it follow that you therefore didn't expect to have to fill them in the way that they were filled or with the product which, with, with which they were filled? Yes. I just want to ask you some questions about substitution of Celotex for rock wool around the windows. Can I ask you to go to SEA 403040, which is page 5, or page 5 of that document. Uh, this is a, a Harley drawing which is showing in the middle insulation by others. Can you see that? I can. Now, this is a document just to give it a date. It's dated the 20th of August 2014, and it's marked 
conforms to design intent approved for construction. You would, this is a, a document you would have seen, presumably, in order to pass to Harley for them to construct. Yeah, it was Harley's drawing. Indeed. But you, it would have passed through your hands as project manager. Yeah. Yes. Now, um, can, you can see in the middle of the page there, uh, it says insulation by others in that, in that space where you can see yep. the gap. Uh, what, who did you consider was responsible for choosing that insula insulation material? Um, I can't recall. I, I would imagine Studio E or Harley. No, Harley wouldn't be doing it, so probably Studio E. You say Harley wouldn't be doing it. Is that it, says because in, it says insulation by others, not yeah. on the Harley drawing. So. Exactly. And is, is, is that because this was part of the inside and not part of the envelope? Yes. That's what Mr. Lawrence said yesterday. I see. Now, you were the project manager. Who were the others that Harley was referring to? Others, not Harley. Well, uh, clearly. But who <laughs> were they? I don't know. It's just... It's, it's just uh, I think that's just a... Uh, we're not doing it. Comment. Not right. a... Right. Can I ask you to go to RYD3040686? And this is uh, an email of the 6th of May, 2015, from Mark Dixon of SD Plastering to Adam Marriott, copy to you and Mr. Lawrence. And he sends a quotation, SDB front sheet quote. Uh, uh, now, you, you, you can see that you received this, mm -hmm. at least as a copy, a recipient. Let's look at the quotation, RYD3088957. RYD3088957. Um, here is a quotation. We, we looked at this with Mr. Lawrence. Uh, he couldn't really help us with it. C c I wonder if you can. Did you open the quotation that Mark Dixon had sent and look at this document? Uh, quite possibly. I don't, don't recall opening it because it's financial. So, um, no, I, I don't recall, but quite possibly, yes. Well, I appreciate it was sent to Adam Marriott uh, in the first instance, but you were copied in on it. And I'm just really wondering whether you were interested enough to, to look at it. Um, if you look at item five, left-hand column, it says place Celotex insulation to reveals and base of window. W when you got this email and received this document, did you open it and notice that it specified Celotex insulation in those locations? Probably not. Why is that? I can't recall. I don't know. Was it not your job to note as project manager to understand what insulation material was being placed uh, in the inside parts of the window, which did not form part of Harley's work package. I, I would imagine this, the left-hand side column, would have been passed on to somebody else. But were you not, as project manager, was it not your job to work out who it was it was being passed on to? Not particularly, no. Why is that? Because it was probably something that Simon would have done, because it had financial restraints on it. Well, you say financial restraints. Well, you know what I mean. There's, there's, there's um, sorry, the, it's got, it's got the contract values and stuff on it. It's not something that I would usually deal with, um, and it's got an element of design in it, hasn't it? Uh, can I ask you to go to the NBS specification, SEA five zero one six nine, page two four three. Uh, under section P10, para 235, compressible insulation in gaps. You can see that that is what is said there. And you can see that underneath that, the manufacturer is rock wool, and the product reference is provided there. And the material is mineral wool to BSEN 13162. Do you remember whether, when you received this quotation from SD Plastering, you referred back to the NBS specification to check which insulation product should be used to pack the window reveals prior to planning the work to those window reveals? No, I doubt I did. Why is that? I, d I don't recall. That was your job, wasn't it? Um, again, it's... Uh, yes, it probably was my job. and No, I don't recall doing it. Right. I, I, I just... Sorry to press, but I'd just like to understand, if it was your job, why you didn't consider doing it? Um, I, I don't think it was an active thought of not considering to do it. Um, I think, as you've put forward, there was pressures on the project, um, you know, with an email tra like traffic the way it was, and 
stuff going on, you know, I possibly have missed it or didn't didn't follow it up the way I should have done. Right. Mr. Lawrence was asked this, uh, about this, and uh, he said, day 25, page 61, line 21, that it was the decision of all at Ryden to go forward with Celotex instead of what was used in the or identified in the NBS specification. Do you agree with that? Well, I wouldn't agree with all. I mean, I don't know what he's referring to as all. I'm going to ask you some questions about liaison with building control. Mr Chairman, th this is, I think, the penultimate line of questions I've got, and it's quite short. I've noticed the time, but we are going to have to take a break. When you say quite short, give me a... Uh, five minutes. Five minutes. I have th five minutes on, on building control, depending on the answers, of course, and whether I have and to follow them be... up. And then a couple of other follow-up questions on workmanship. So we'll call that ten. Well, and yes, that's probably right. You have it gone for another ten minutes. Yeah. After that, we'll have a have to have a break while people review the situation. So uh, we'll see how we get on. Yes, go on. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, you, you say in your statement that the involvement of building control, among others, gave you reassurance that fire safety was being properly addressed. And just for your uh, benefit, that's paragraph 16 of your statement. Do you agree that it was incumbent on Ryden to ensure that building control were provided with full and proper information about the design? and the construction uh, of the Grenfell Tower refurbishment works? Yes. And that would include design and construction of the rain screen cladding facade? Yes. Uh, and it was incumbent on Ryden to take proper steps to ensure that Studio E and Harley provided the right information to building control? Yes. Uh, and that that would happen in a, an orderly, coherent and timely manner? Yes? Usually, yes. Uh, and also I I information in respect of what products were going to go onto the building. Yeah, uh, yeah, that would form part of this, the drawings and the spec, I'd imagine. So. Yes. What steps did you take, Mr O'Connor, to ensure that building control were provided with full and proper information about those matters? I think the liaison with building control was mainly done above me. Right. Can I ask you to go to RYD 3016989? This is an email from Simon Lawrence to John Hoban of RBKC of the 3rd of September 2014. I think we looked at this before in your evidence. Uh, and uh, I asked you, I think, earlier about whether you could recall a meeting on site between you and Mr. Hoban. I don't, I don't think you could recall that. Um, we, we have uh, dug out a, a note of that meeting, or what we think might be. This is RBK 403041 at page 8. And let's see if this triggers a recollection. That's RBK 403041. Uh, this is uh, a, 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 a note of the meeting said to have taken place on the 29th August 2015. If we go to page 8, uh, I'm sorry, this is actually a running document. Page 8 is what we want. There we go. And you can see the date there. Uh, and uh, the officer was John Hoban. Notes, visited site, met project manager, had brief discussion about the project, asked to be contacted when construction works commence on site, gave advice that what's, as to what stages of the works we needed to, to be contacted to inspect, Workmen still presently carrying out demolition works, nothing to check at time of visit, demolition works to go on for some time. Also informed the project manager that I had yet to receive up-to-date details of the works. Um, was that project manager that he's referring to, do you think, you? I was the only project manager, so yeah, I would imagine it would be me. Right. Do you recall a meeting, now you've seen this note, with Mr Hoban at the end of August 2014 and discussing these matters with him? Um... I don't, I don't recall it any more than I did this morning, if I'm I see. Right, so this doesn't trigger any recollection in your mind about the matters you discussed with him or the meeting itself? No. Right. Do you remember whether Mr. Hoban took any drawings away from any meeting that he had with you? Um, 
not from then. I mean, from reading the documents that we're reading now, um, it's quite possible that Neil Crawford may have brought an A3 file of drawings for uh, Mr. Hoban to take with him, but I don't recall giving him any drawings. Right. Can we stick with this document and go up to page six, please, and look at the top of the page, where we can see that there's an entry for a meeting or visit on the 29th of September 2014, where Mr. Hoban says that he'd had a brief discussion. Uh, he visited, visited site, met project manager, had brief discussion about the project work when still presently carrying out def demolition works, nothing to check at time of visit. And then he says at the end, also informed the project manager that I had just received the up-to-date details of the works. Do you remember that meeting? No. Do you remember a meeting at about this time when you did re give him up-to-date details of the works? Or I don't think he told he's saying, you that he just received them? I don't think he's saying that I gave them to him. I think he's saying that he's, he's received them. I, um, so no, I don't, I don't recall call that. Do you remember him mentioning at this meeting that he received drawing? He had received drawings from Neil Crawford. No. Do you remember whether Mr. Hoban gave you any indication that he knew what materials were going to be used in the facade? I don't remember the meeting. If I'm honest, it, right. you know, it, was, it was a long time ago. I don't. I, I'm not not going to stand here and say yes. I remember. I, I don't. Now, I think you referred in your statement to a visit in May 2015. If we go to ART 404029 at page 12, we can see an Artelia progress report. And under section 7, actually, this looks like a Ryden progress report, in fact. But if we look under section 7, building control. We're on site on Friday, 15th May, to inspect the top three floors for insulation, fire break, and window insulation on three elevation and had no for adverse comments. Does this document trigger a recollection with you about whether you were the person on site seeing building control on that day? I don't think that would have been me. Who would that have been, do you think? Um, probably the external manager. I don't think Danny Osgood, yeah, Danny Osgood was there then. Right. Well, let's see if we can just pursue that a bit. If we look at the RBKC note of the visit, that's RBK 403041 at page 4. And I'd like to look at the second lowest box on that page. This is, again, in that run of RBKC John Hoban uh, meeting notes. And this time we're looking at um, the meeting of the 15th of May 2015. It's very short. It just says inspection to check framework for cladding. Can you see? Yep. Uh, can you help us with what RBKC actually inspected on that visit, or can you not? That would have been the front, it would have been the framework. I mean, the, the rails and brackets, I'd imagine. Yes. But do you remember an inspection by John Hoban checking the, frame, the framework for the cladding at that time? Not specifically, but I know I know that was a part of that he that he'd requested seeing. Do you remember whether RBKC inspected the internal works above the fourth floor? RBKC? Well, John Hoban, building control. I don't recall if he did or not. Right. I think they employed Clarker Works for that. During your interactions with John Hoban, did you ever tell him that the metal framework supporting the cladding had been tested? No. Did you ever tell him that the cladding system had been fitted to many buildings throughout England and Wales to buildings of a similar height and construction? I wouldn't have known that at the time. Did you ever tell John Hoban that the cladding would comply with the standards set out in approved document B? No. Did you ever tell John Hoban that the cladding panels were class naught or above? No. Did you ever hear anybody else say something along those lines to John Hoban? Not that I recall, no. Can I then just finally ask you... Uh, ..one or two further questions about your liaisons with the building control officer. Uh, Mr Lawrence gave evidence uh, 
yesterday, to day 25, and for our references, it's line, it's page 181, line 12, and following, uh, about conversations with the building control officer. Uh, and I'm so sorry, that's you giving evidence. To, uh, and uh, you say that you walked around looking at progress and you didn't have detailed conversations with him. Uh, I don't have anything on my screen, just so you're aware. No, that's right. Yeah. Don't worry for the moment. Now, perhaps the best and simplest way to do this is to show you Mr. Crawford's statement. Uh, SEA 301475 at page 65. In paragraph 206, he says, towards the start of my involvement in the project, I recall meeting John Hoban, building control, with Simon O'Connor Ryden on site. This may have been during the week commencing 25th of August 2014. I remember that John was very clear about how he wanted information issued, if we could turn the page, such as that he was specifically and primarily concerned with fire-related matters and wanted a basic set of information so that he could then request further information if he required it, so that he was not overwhelmed with information. Now, we've got uh, the last part of August. We've seen the Hoban note about that. Having, having me, shown you, me having shown you that, does that trigger a recollection in your mind uh, about what was discussed in that late August 2014 meeting? No, it doesn't, Minister. Is Mr Crawford's recollection incorrect when he says that he met uh, uh, Mr Hoban and you on site and that Mr Hoban uh, told you both what he wanted, namely a basic set of information so that he could then request further information if he required it? I can't say Mr Crawford's incorrect, but I don't recall that conversation. Right. Now, can I just put to you what Mr Lawrence says about liaisons with uh, building officers? He said at day uh, 25, let's have a look at page 181. I just want to show you a brief exchange there. He says, in answer to my question at line 19, and I've shown, an, I've shown him an email of the 3rd of September, which I've shown you, uh, and <coughs> it says, you refer in that email, as you can see, to a meeting on site between John Hoban and Simon O'Connor. Answer, which presumably is the meeting that was referenced a few moments ago. Yes, I was going to ask you that. Did Simon O'Connor himself relay to you what had been discussed at that meeting? And he goes on, I know Mr Crawford, we go over the page, recalls you being present and you can't remember, but did Mr O'Connor tell you what was discussed at that meeting? He may have done at the time, but I don't recall now. You see that? Uh, 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 and uh, then I ask him, do you know whether Mr O'Connor had said anything to Mr Hoban about whether the cladding system complied with approved document B? I don't recall being told that, and I can't imagine. I think it's probably best to ask Simon, but I can't imagine that he would be. Simon O'Connor would be stating that to building control. Did you state that to building control? No. Do you accept that your interactions with building control went beyond the cursory formalities that you, you I think, described to us this morning in your evidence? No, not particularly. Um, we wouldn't be discussing document B. Um, uh, I want to show you something else while we're on uh, day 20. Minute, how are we getting on? Uh, very well, Mr. Mr. Chairman. I've I mean, just I'm got just two or three more questions. We've been running now for quite a long time. Okay, well, I, we should we have. have uh, I'll take our break now, and then you can speak very well. any more of your questions than anybody else's at the same time. Yes, very well. All right. Um, is 10 minutes going to be enough for oh, us? Uh, no, I think it isn't. I, I'm, I'm, I'm detecting from my screen on the left that a little bit more time might be needed, I'm afraid, Mr Chairman. There are questions, I think, rumbling from others which I feel I need to ask, or may need to ask. Right. We'll have a short break now, Mr Connor. We'll come back at half past four. I'm sorry that this afternoon is going on longer than you probably had expected. I'm afraid there's not much we can do about that. It's okay. But um, we'll come back at half past four and see how much there is then. All right. Thank you.
Right, I'll fast forward, please. Thank you.
All right. Would you ask Mr. O'Connor to come back, please? Right, Mr. O'Connor. Ready, ready for the last lap, I hope. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Mr. O'Connor, thank you. I've only got one more question or set of questions for you. Can I ask you to be shown RYD 402091? Uh, this is an email from Simon Lawrence to you, the 20th of May 2015. Uh, and... Uh, I think we've looked at it earlier, actually, because it was about uh, the inspection sheet and the RS5000 product sheet. We looked at it this morning in the context of a discussion about Celotex. I just want to ask you about the second paragraph. He says, uh, as you can read, I've told him about our quality procedures, which we should be carrying out. We, whilst we always do this, we aren't always the greatest on site at keeping all of the records. In this case, we need to be spot on in case the funders require it at the end in order to release funds. Can you also ensure the attached external works inspection sheet is used? Obviously, you'll need to add to the checklist comments. I've only filled in a couple as an example. I just want to focus on th that second paragraph with you about quality procedures. And he says, does Simon Lawrence, we aren't always the greatest on site at keeping all of the records. Would you agree with Mr. Lawrence's assessment about the uh, keeping of records at site on this project? Not particularly just on this project, um, on projects generally within Ryden. Oh, I see. So this, this problem about record keeping on site was a problem endemic in Ryden, was it? It wasn't just um, at Grenfell. I see. Right. Thank you. But it was on Grenfell as well as the other projects that you did. I thought the record keeping was quite good, actually, but... Right. So you don't agree with Mr. Lawrence's assessment, is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying we, we don't always get it right, it's not always spot on, but um, I'm saying it's not just singling out Grenville. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, well, Mr. O'Connor, I've got no further questions for you uh, for this module, uh, and therefore I'm very grateful to you for coming along and assisting us with our investigations. Uh, Say, so, Mr. Chairman, I have nothing for Mr. O'Connor left to ask him today. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. O'Connor, that was a shorter lap than I had <laughs> expected and perhaps than you'd expected as well. Anyway, uh, that's all the questions we have for you. Thank you very much for coming to give us your evidence. I'm sorry it's gone on a little longer than we'd expected, but you are now finished and you're free to go. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Would you like to go with the usher? Thank you very much, Mr. Pitt. Mr. Chairman, thank you. And um, the next witness will be Mr. David Hughes of Ryden, whom Ms. Grange will be examining on Monday morning. Good. Thank you. And we'll resume then at 10 o'clock on Monday morning. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much.